tonight. Feeling the heat? Health Ministry advises of precautions to prevent adverse effects of severe heat spell. The, the health authorities have advised general public and especially the school children to have more liquid diets or liquid drinks in frequent intervals. Sri Lanka first. Dr. Palita Kohona urges effective use of diplomacy to serve the country's interests on the global stage. Churchill once said that Her Majesty's government has no permanent friends and no permanent gain, only permanent interests. Going green. Government reveals plans to migrate 70% of Sri Lanka's energy needs to green means within three years. Reaching out. President's Council Ali Sabri calls for building more communal bridges and less walls. All that and much more coming up on First at Nine, this Thursday, the 13th of February, 2020. From Adha Derana, this is Adha Derana First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Dhamma Kekanai. Let's start with the local stories. Now with Sri Lanka experiencing some severe heat conditions over the past few days, the Ministry of Health cautions schools in conducting outdoor activities to prevent children from catching heat stroke. Now the Ministry warns that exposure to extreme heat can prove damaging to the human body and therefore urges people to take ample amounts of fluids to stay hydrated as the heat spell is set to continue. Following adverse heat conditions prevailing in the island in the past few days, the Health Ministry has advised school authorities to exercise caution in the holding of sports meets and other outdoor events. The Ministry warned that the extreme heat conditions could result in an increase in tension and muscle cramps in students, while also warning of risks of heart or lung diseases. In addition, officials warned of that students could heat stroke and fall unconscious as a result of long exposure to the heat conditions. To prevent such occurrences, school authorities have been advised to take precautionary measures to protect students from heat-related complications, such as the provision of sufficient drinking water facilities for students to avoid dehydration. Meanwhile, Assistant Secretary of the Government Medical Officers Association, Dr. Harita Aludge, expanded on measures to be taken. The environmental temperature has gone up these days and as the Government Medical Officers Association, with the guidelines issued by the Family Health Bureau of the Health Ministry, the Ministry of Health has sent or the forwarded the proposals or the, these guidelines to the Education Ministry regarding how to face this situation and they have sent the recommendations for minimizing the adverse health effects on school children due to excessive heat, especially uh, to the health staff and to the education ministry and they have mentioned the complication which can occur as heat cramps and also heat exhaustion and in much severe cases his heat strokes those things can be avoided by simple measures and the health authorities have advised general public and especially the school children to have more liquid diets or the liquid drinks in frequent intervals especially during the sports events. As you all know, the sports events are taking place at the moment within most of the schools and uh, the authorities have requested to avoid uh, school children in the open areas under the direct exposure to the sunlight and the excessive heat during the hours from 11.30 a.m. to about 1.30 to 2 p.m. And this is important and if there's any need, the guidelines were sent to the medical officers of health officers and the PHI divisions and therefore the school school principals or the education authorities can contact the area MOH or the PHI for necessary action regarding how to manage these conditions. Now with a permanent solution for Sri Lanka's energy problems still elusive, Minister Mahinda Amaravira today emphasised Sri Lanka's plans for migrating the country from its reliance on fossil fuels. Speaking to media at a Renewable Energy and Growth Forum, the Minister revealed that the government plans to ensure that 70% of Sri Lanka's energy needs will be met using green and sustainable means by 2023. 
ada dini India anu rajaat te bagaima pabut gelik ayatan keepi okut mulela. Mesam menteri ne pabat tanne Sri Lanka awat harit viduliya rispad ne kiri me ratak bawa da parwat ne kiri me. Medepil lah samag. Ehi pradana wasin ma aperate surya balen viduliya rispad ne kiri me. Nanti sola. E bagaima sulam balen viduliya rispad ne kiri me. E bagaima meke pradana aramun benne parisar hitakami viduliya labadi me medepil lah kriyat mak kiri me. Tamae balapurutu ti enne. Gota be raja baksh chenad bhut magit balapurutu. Dedas tiha benam ite. Lanka we viduliya pramane siar hatte awa parisar hitakami viduliya labagan parisar ieta hari no na akar ieta katu kukaran tamae. Dan tamat India win apitah mul me prathipad ni akta bilat ino US dollar million siya ke me viduliya apu tikriat mak kiri masanda. Sola niwas sela wahal mat sola digiri me tulu ekatu tulu de dewan neva balapurutu. Former permanent representative to the United Nations, Dr. Palita Kohona, states that Sri Lanka needs to get its diplomacy into high gear to face the challenges of the Asian resurgence, one that the West finds hard to come to terms with. He added that in this process, the government must ensure that it leaves no room for India to doubt its intentions. Sri Lanka's former permanent representative to the United Nations, Dr. Palit Kohona, delivering a keynote address at a book launch event recently, stated that the Asian resurgence is one that the West still cannot come to terms with and added that Sri Lanka needs to use its diplomatic tools effectively to put its own interests ahead of friendships. Churchill once said that Her Majesty's government has no permanent friends and no permanent enemies, only permanent interests. I believe that's a very good point to start a discourse on foreign relations. A country cannot have permanent friends. In the 60s, Asia was the poorest continent in the world. There were the largest number of the poverty-stricken, the hungry, the deprived were in Asia. But something changed dramatically over the years. Asia got rid of its image of a poverty-stricken, starving continent and came to the fore. It's today a booming area. And of course, this has created problems because first and foremost, the West, which has always been used to treating Asia as a colonial possession to be exploited, suddenly couldn't cope with this because Asia was no longer poor, no longer poverty stricken, no longer starving. So what did they do? There was significant backpedaling. The US, which was a champion of free trade and liberalized trade, is now putting up barriers everywhere. Asians who learned all this from the West are now doing much better with those lessons than the Europeans are able to do. Some writers have said that Asia is not actually doing this for the first time. It's reasserting its historical position. In 1820, Asia had 66% of the world's population and produced 50% of the world's wealth. By the turn of the 20th century, India, for example, its share of the world economy has dipped to 4% and it was the home to the largest number of malnourished and starving in the world. China was no different. And this happened in a very short period of 80 years. And what went wrong? Uh, we did not pursue our advantages in military matters. We fell behind. Our religion suddenly became not an enlightening experience, but something that constrained us. The result is that a resurgent Europe, first and then America, they were able to dominate the rest of us. Asia now accounts for 30% of the world's output. 40% of the world's manufacturing comes from Asia. And then we all heard about the Belt and Road Initiative. The Belt and Road now covers 68 countries. 68 countries have subscribed to it. 65% of the world's population comes within the Belt and Road Initiative now. 40% of the world's GDP comes from these countries which have joined the Belt and Road Initiative. And China, last year, provided $60 billion in infrastructure development assistance to Africa. So you can see where the focus of the world is at the moment. I should not forget India. I should mention India as well. We need to work very closely with India, ensure that India does not entertain any doubts about our intentions. Sri Lanka cannot get close to anyone, whether in the East or the West, which will cause India to have any suspicions about our motives. And that can be done. That's what diplomacy is all about. 
Now moving on with other stories, President's Council Ali Sabri believes that the people of the country need to work on building bridges and not walls if a prosperous and sus uh, sustainable country is required. Speaking at a convocation ceremony in Colombo yesterday, the President's Council emphasized the importance of influencing the majority towards good, then focusing on a minority that holds on to extremist views. Meanwhile, the High Commission of Pakistan in Sri Lanka, Muhammad Saadi Katak, said that if a society is to live in peace and move towards development, minorities need to live in peace with the majority's culture and laws of the country. Extremism, radicalism, terrorism is part of no religion. No religion teaches extremism. No religious teaches radicalism. And no religion teaches terrorism to kill subjugate or terrorize innocent people of other religions, of other cultures. So anyone who is operating on the lines of extremists, extremism, believe me, is working outside his own religion. He is not working as a part of his own religion. He is now extending his religion beyond its religious limits. Therefore, it is incumbent on the minorities to live in peace and harmony with the majority because by living in peace and harmony with the majority they bring good to their own communities they bring good to their own society they bring good to their own and that is how you not only help the leadership and the society of the country you help your own community which is your prime responsibility to help and protect <laughs> Make them a sapte, may buy a degola teramute, may one nivan natanam, a pimona the keranato, lam venato, palam bandin nato, tapa had an ekene vere, a pipalam tanano, venuata, a pip tapa hadalati, a pit durasta velati, durasta venacota, tavatava, eliata yanacota, madaminusun devil, visabija danalis, prasna katakarana vidiane, visan the gana vidiane, one mat samacheka, in no seer the hayak with the minisu, yam kisi, antava decata, anta. Tawadi korang sekarang ni kan? Eking ada haskaran ni, nampak orang teras tawadi ada kehilat ini orang kehilat ayu dekang ni kan? Namun, jangan antawadi ada haskaran. Tawak kita saat ini orang sihir ada dahaya. Ita amat pun paritya agisili, ita amat pun suhud agisili, ita amat pun adre amot. Honda ganti guna dia. Mereka ini orang sihir tak suah betul. Ego lalu antamai hasuragan lalu ni. Ego lalu me paritya agisili tenat, mitru tenat, soiru pemati ini tenat talu no. Rata sama kan? Apa itu puluhan orang muda minum susu di kereta bela, palam bandala, sahaja rata dia guna nak guna, api bala peraturan, sastrik, samurti mat, samad kami Sri Lanka bag bihi kiri, bihi kerana di nea, badi air takkan nove. Now the Colombo Crime Division today informed court that investigators have not yet been instructed to file a B report regarding the interdicted High Court Judge Gihan Pilipitia or to obtain an arrest warrant for his arrest. Officer in charge of the Colombo Crime Division, Neville De Silva, made this statement when the case was taken up before the Nugegoda Additional Magistrates Court today. The Attorney General's Department made submissions to court yesterday regarding interdicted High Court Judge Gihan Pilipitia. The Attorney General was however informed by the Nugegoda Additional Magistrate that an arrest warrant can only be issued upon the submitting of a sworn testimony by an investigating officer and due to an investigative officer not being present yesterday, the legal proceedings were postponed up until today. Accordingly, when the case was called today, Nugegoda Additional Magistrate H.U.K. Palpola asked the investigating officers whether they were ready to testify in court over investigations. Officer in charge of the Colombo Crimes Division, Neville De Silva, informed court that he had not been instructed to file a B report on the case of Judge Gihan Pilapitia and obtain an arrest warrant against him. Accordingly, he proceeded to say that no arrangements had been made to obtain the warrant against the interdicted High Court judge today. Senior State Counsel Janaka Bandara then requested court to grant time to the investigating officers to consult regarding the case. Accordingly, Nugegoda Additional Magistrate H.U.K. Palpola ordered the case to be taken up for hearing on the 26th of February.
Meanwhile, the Ambilipitiya Lawyers Association today staged a protest against the attempt to arrest interdicted High Court Judge Gihan Pilapitiya. Now in other local stories, several government decisions were outlined at the weekly cabinet media briefing held this morning. Chief among them was the government's decision to extend the free visa facility and the approval grant to stockpile 20 to 35,000 metric tons of rice from this season's harvest, which will be used to offset high prices during lean months by releasing such stocks at control prices. The weekly cabinet media briefing was held this morning where co cabinet spokesman Dr. Bandula Gunavardhana and State Minister Dr. Ramesh Patirana outlined the decisions approved by the cabinet of ministers this week. In a move aimed at increasing tourist arrivals to the country, the cabinet has approved the extension of the free visa system for a further three months from the 1st of February. The cabinet has also approved a proposal by the Ministry of Finance to transfer some of 163 million rupees to the Somalia control account as Sri Lanka's total contribution to the IMF's burden-sharing mechanism. Also approved was a proposal aimed at making amendments to the country's Intellectual Property Act by entering into the Madrid Protocol under the World Intellectual Property Organization that would guarantee greater international protection of local trademarks. Meanwhile, co-cabinet spokesman State Minister Dr. Ramesh Patirana revealed a host of measures aimed at tackling issues faced by the country's workers and consumers as well. Mirata Seva Karta Sada Karamudalata, Dai Katwe Labadena, Miliana de Kajas Mahayaku, Mirata Seva Kaseva Kavange, Ginum Valata, Adala Mudal, Barabanaba, then again, Medi, Matuvi, Gatusaga, Tatu, Salakilatarina, Kam Karusa, Rakiraksha, Pilipan, the Katutuamat, Dinishnova, the Matumavisin, Idripat Karantadun, Cabinet Patrikavak Magin, Min Pasua, Adala Ginumata, Mudal, Masika, Barabanaba, Tamunge, Durakatane Haraha, Data Labagani, Kamavediak, Sakas Karatibeno. Mirata Sahal Vagava, Vadat Paladai Lesa Pradanesa Prachilit Cream Pinisa, V Paration Sangwara than Ayatanesaha, Pilipine Manila Nura, Pradana, V Paration Ayatanesama, Eka Bata, Yusma Katsan Kirimata, Tehraha, Lankave, Viva Gavi, Paladai Tave, Vadikirim Sandha, Vasha, Takshanika Danuma, Saha, Yavabo de Labaganima Pinisa, Vashan Matia Labadi Tibeno. Ibagi Matamai, Upper Sama Vasarakama, Mirata, December, Janamari Masa, Kale Atra Kale Tuladi, Janata, Muhunapana, Sahalmila, Yelama Piliban, the Karne, Salakil Taragina, Mima Vasaredi, Aswanu Pramaniak, Akanda Varak Shakra Tabagina, Metricton Visidahasat, Vispandasat Atra Pramana, Gabada Kota Tabagani in Pasua, Sahal Higa Ativana Kala Vakavanu Tuladi, Sahanadai Mudala Kata, Emma Sahal, Vilandapolata, Nikutkirim Sandaha, Avasha Karebaresa, Emma Sahal Toga, Arak Shakota Tabagani Winwin, Avasha Tindua Gata. Meanwhile, co cabinet spokesman Dr. Bandur Gunwardhana revealed cabinet steps taken towards the clearing of unsettled contract dues left over from the 2019 fiscal year. Garu Mudala Matia, Gramate, Mind Rajapak Sametuma, Paripur Castamin to a Parliament to a Idripat Kerala, Didas Dadame Mudalvarshi, Nirulkar Nomet Bilpat, PV Mavinwin, Pratipadan Salasagani Sanda, Atru Sanso the Ne Sanso the Ne Karanta, Atru Samma the Ginuma, February Massa Pasveni, the Parliament to a Idripat Amatiban Rasimi, the Gatta Tirni Anu, May Yojana, Parliament to a Idripatkala Labana Sati. Sammat Karaganta Balapro Tueno, E. E. Sammat Kirima Sanda, Kesidu Sakekin Torova, Vipaxi Vising, Tande Labadeno, Atikirapi Balapro Tueno, Maknisa de Ongi Kalaparche de Tuladi, Gamanagum, Gamperali, Langama Parcel, Hondama Parcel, Mama Marg, Via Proti, Anadi, Venuin, own contract to Labaladila. A better Nimakal, own missing give you to Mudala, give unto Mudal Netikamai, Tien. The novel coronavirus is still wreaking havoc. Details after this break.
Welcome back. This is First at Nine. Now, Sri Lanka's personal income taxpayers are set to receive relief up to 1.2 million rupees a year. Relief will be provided for investments in stocks and securities, housing interest, pension contributions, medical insurance and insurance education incurred within the country. According to, the, according to Sri Lanka's Inland Revenue Department, residents, taxpay, resident taxpayers rather, and citizens abroad will also receive 3 million rupees in tax relief on all earnings as part of tax cuts announced in December last year. Individuals will be taxed at 6% for the next 3 million rupees, 12% for the next 3 million and 18% on the balance. Interest on foreign currency deposits will also be exempted from tax. Now taking a look at the markets, Sri Lankan shares closed lower today, dragged down by consumer discretionary and industrial stocks. The all share price index closed 21.14 points down at 5,857.30, while the S&P SL20 index closed 8.74 points down at 2,776.09. Market turnover was 262.88 million rupees with 49 stocks gaining and 98 falling. Now here's a brief report on today's market performance. The bond market, the secondary market yield remained broadly unchanged while overall market witnessed thin volumes. In the equity market, the boards ended in red for the fifth straight session on the price losses made in commercial bank and dialogue. Turnover recorded a near two-week low, while nearly 51% of the day's turnover was trades made in John Keyes and commercial bank. Now in the currency market, the rupee ended steady at 181 rupees and 42 to 48 cents to the US dollar in the spot market. Liquidity in the overnight money market was 24.97 billion rupees, up from 19.19 billion rupees at yesterday's close. With that, now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against other major currencies during the day. And that's it from all of us here at First at Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.